11.03, why don't we go ahead and get started. I want to welcome everyone for being on the webinar today. Uh, if you just join us, um, you won't have any audio or uh, video capabilities, but uh, we welcome you here. If you have any questions or want to make a comment as we go through the presentation, uh, please feel free, free to throw it into the chat box. Um, my name is Dan. I'm the membership uh, manager with the Greater Vernon Chamber and so excited to be joined by Natalie Appleton. She's the founder and senior writer strategist for Redhead Studio. So thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Uh, I'll give you a, a little bit of background on Natalie. So uh, when the recession struck and the newspaper industry took a turn, uh, Natalie turned lemons into London. After graduating from uh, City University London in the UK, the Masters of Arts in Creative Writing uh, in 2012, Natalie founded Redhead Copywriting, now Redhead Studio, uh, to help brands tell their stories. An award-winning writer uh, who has worked at newspapers across Western Canada, her writing has appeared in publications around the world, including the New York Times. Uh, Natalie is a creative writer and founder of Red, or probably read local Okanagan. And yeah. plus, if you're in a pinch, she can get you around Bangkok on a motorbike. I don't think we can go any further without you explaining that a little bit. <laughs> I, I had the good fortune of living in Bangkok for a couple of years in my crazy 20s. And uh, that was my preferred method of transportation. So cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would never do it now. But <laughs> was that? I said, I don't know if I'd do it now, but. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're all here to talk about uh, brand storytelling in the new era, and the new era is probably the big part of this, right? Yeah, yeah. There's lots to talk about here, but first I just wanted to say thanks so much, Dan, for uh, that introduction and for um, hosting this series and the others, Richard, um, for his help as well. You guys have done so much for our business community in the last uh, few months and we're, we're really grateful for all these opportunities to uh, to figure out how to get through this together and share each other's expertise. So thank you so much for what you do. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we're happy to, but we can, obviously can't do it without people like yourself uh, willing to, you know, commit some of their time to share their expertise with the group. So thank you again for being here. So, but hey, thank you, you. Yeah, I can right, stop can I, my screen. I will take over. Okay, so thanks again so much everyone for joining. Uh, this webinar is called Brand Storytelling in a New Era. So we're gonna be talking about how we can inspire our audiences and stay competitive at this time. Please feel welcome to ask questions throughout in the chat box and Dan will be sure to uh, keep us on track. Um, we'll have some time at the end as well for questions, I hope, but please feel welcome throughout to ask questions and uh, want to really just make sure that uh, you get out of this what you need to, to figure out how you can make the most of your uh, content marketing at this time. Uh, just quickly, a little bit more about Redhead Studio. So we are a boutique uh, PR and content marketing firm, and our job is really to help you get more eyes on your story. And so the way we do that is through content marketing, our content writing, like uh, blog articles and press releases and website content and social media management, PR, all those great things that, uh, that really come down to a lot of brand storytelling. I got into this world um, as Dan alluded to because I was a journalist and um, that industry wasn't doing so well at a certain time and um, my last post actually was at the Vernon Morning Star. I was really lucky I got to work with Richard for a while and I was working as the business editor and I loved that job because I got to talk to people all the time who were so excited about what they do and had so much expertise but they really um, their marketing materials, that, that expertise and enthusiasm didn't always transfer to the page. And so um, I started to get inklings of an idea that maybe there was an opportunity to create a business where I could help people do that storytelling for them. So brand storytelling is really just about winning hearts and minds. And it's through our storytelling that we affect connections and change. This is why we do this. Um, but it's, it's not such a, such a big, 
or, or elaborate idea really, anytime that you uh, share words or images about your business, you are doing brand storytelling. Another word for it is content marketing, right? I kind of like brand storytelling because there's a little bit more uh, romance to it, an idea of this narrative of getting through things and um, connections and some of those kinds of ideas. So if you've ever shared a social media post, if you've written content on your website, you've engaged in, in brand storytelling. So you are a brand storyteller too. This is a, a just a lovely example, I think, of, of brand storytelling at its best. And we're going to, um, in this workshop, take apart what makes this a really uh, simple and effective act of brand storytelling. And we're going to go through lots of examples um, from local businesses. And um, some of them are ones that I get to work with and lots are ones that I don't. But I love featuring uh, local businesses and we have some really great examples from our own community about how to um, be strong and effective brand storytellers, even at this time. And so we'll, we'll move through that. One of the most common mediums that most of us use for brand storytelling is social media, um, but that's certainly not the only way. So we'll take a look at a few different kinds of examples, um, but social media will be the, the primary medium that we'll take a look at today. So why is brand storytelling so important right now? It's really important right now because uh, since we've been so separated from each other, our daily connections at um, the cafe, at the grocery store, um, in our offices, we're all really craving connections. People want to support brands that have values that align with yours. A lot of people are really feeling strong convictions about what they believe in and what kind of life they want to have right now and so that's made them really want to champion brands that have similar values so there's a lot of opportunities there and we'll talk about how we can tap into that people also need hope and i, I think sometimes as business owners we don't realize that we are actually leaders in our community and role models and if the people in the business community can see us getting through this, moving forward, making our way through some change that isn't always comfortable, that they can do it too. I think we can actually um, have an opportunity to be really inspiring for our community. And people are ready to hear from you. So we're gonna take a look at some numbers that show uh, what, how engaging has, changed over the last little while. So I'm going to reference some numbers from a study conducted by a media company called Kantar. What we're seeing is um, web browsing has increased by 70%. Not surprising social media engagement has increased by 61%. Facebook usage, 37% increase. The biggest usage increase is in that 18 to 34 age group. So these are the people who are, uh, you know, staying home from classes right now. Maybe they're the ones who, um, who are out of work. They have some time on their hands. And if they are in your audience group, we really want to try and try and put them to work and, and be making connections with them. So we'll, we'll talk about how we can do that more. Another number that's worth noting is that through Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp especially, we've seen a 40% usage increase from those under 35s. So if that's your audience, you've really got a captive, captive audience right now. Something that, uh, some of the intelligence that maybe some of us in our day-to-day -day, um, social media and content marketing efforts maybe aren't quite sure about is what do people actually want from brands right now? So um, that study also um, gave some intelligence about uh, what people really want to see. So I think this is really helpful and it can kind of reaffirm what you might think. Um, so you know that, yeah, okay, I'm on the right path with this. 78% want to see brands taking care of employees' health. So if you can demonstrate visually in a, in a social post that you are doing 
uh, taking precautions, taking steps that protect your team members, that's really going to carry a lot of weight with them. 41% of people want to see brands supporting hospitals and being helpful to the government. 77% have said, I want you to talk about um, how the brand is helpful in the new everyday. So we're going to take a look at some strategies of how we can demonstrate each of these points in a few minutes, but I really wanted to, to take a look at the, the numbers so we can see um, what people really want right now from their brands. They want to see how you're facing the situation. So this is something that I know some brands have been thinking, well, maybe, you know, it's kind of hard and it's kind of ugly um, cleaning the floors and changing the layout and all those kinds of things that, that different small business owners have to face right now. Um, but your audience actually has an appetite for seeing that you're getting through this. I think part of it comes back to making sure that you're protecting them and your employees. But I think also part of it is um, that, that hope piece and seeing how you're getting through things. They're sort of turning to you uh, for that leadership a little bit and to know that you're gonna be there. There's so many unknowns. If we have you know, our favorite handful of, of local brands say that we follow, to know that they're working through these things, that they're gonna be open, there's, there's really a lot of, of hope there. So um, don't be afraid to show how you're facing the situation. We'll take a look at some examples. 70% said we want you to offer a reassuring tone. And I think this is interesting and important because um, there is so much information coming our way and a lot of that information has not necessarily been translated in a way that is engaging, warm, or easy to read. And so I think, um, if we don't get that feeling from, let's say, government or um, other sort of um, organizations, then we look for it from the brands that we engage with on social media. 75% said, but don't exploit the coronavirus situation to promote the brand. So if there's no link to from what you're doing to um, what's happening, uh, we, we wouldn't want to be seen as being opportunistic. Most of the time, though, and we'll take a look at some ways of doing this, there is a way you can connect the world we live in now with the values that your audience has, with what you do for your customers, so that it, it, it genuinely isn't opportunistic. But, but we really would want to avoid that blatant opportunistic um, storytelling. And then 40% said avoid humorous tones. And so something to note is that the study was conducted um, about halfway through, I guess, the period that we're in now, which is, the, I would say, the three month mark. So I think people were a little bit more um, sensitive then. I think that number, if, if the same study were conducted, might be a little bit um, more uh, generous now. Um, there are certainly opportunities for it, but a, a lot of the early communication that we saw from major brands was of uh, um, being trying to be warm, but not not funny because they're really in the early days was just there was nothing, not much humor to be found. So now we're going to take a look at how we can create content that meets those needs that we're hearing from our audience. So number one, one of the one of the big questions I think uh, a lot of business owners have in their minds is how can we still sell? How can we storytell in a way that's sensitive? So selling is storytelling and storytelling is selling. Um, storytelling is, you know, sort of a, a less direct or uh, more subtle way. But um, either way, you're, you're still here and your brand and uh, your audience doesn't expect you to stop selling. Um, they're just looking for ways for you to do it in a way that's sensitive with the time. So let's take a look at some, some ways we can do that. One of the first things that we need to kind of step back and think about, and it's actually a really big piece, is what are your brand values? So I hope you have a piece of paper handy and something that you can 
that you can write with. Hopefully some of these are just kind of uh, top of mind. Um, if not, even if one or two are, that will help you for this webinar. Having an understanding of what your, what your brand values are makes it really easy for you to determine what your content should look like. It's putting a stake in the ground and saying, this is what we stand for. Is this kind of post? Is this kind of language okay? And then you can measure it against what your values are. So that piece is really important. So if you can, just take a moment to write down one, two, three, five of your brand values. So this is an example from a, a clothing company. Yours could look quite, quite different. So I'll just give you another moment to capture those. These, this is a, a slide that's just got a whole bunch of different examples. That photo is courtesy of Canva. Um, there obviously are, are infinitely more um, examples. I love that coolness was a, a brand value in this example. I want that to be one of my values. Um, there's, some, there's some good examples in there, though, for sure. Okay, so you've got your brand values in mind. The next thing that we need to think about now is, is our audience groups. What is their why? What are their values? So I'm gonna get you to do a little bit of work again. I want you to think about your three audience groups. Um, if, you, if you can pick out at least three. So these are three different maybe generations or types of customers who engage with your brand possibly in different ways. So if you're an organization, it could be that they are donors or sponsors or partners. It could be that um, maybe even employees are uh, one of your audiences. Um, maybe if your business is, um, is like a, a senior's care home, one of your audiences would be the parents or the, I guess the kids that are doing the research for their parents and then the parents themselves who would be coming to live with you would be another audience group. Um, if you were the farmer's market, you would have, you know, your vendors would be an audience group and then um, the like hipster moms would be another audience group and then maybe the seniors would be another audience group. Each of these audience groups has different reasons that they um, love your brand and different ways that they will support your brand um, kind of in the everyday and then also on social media. So list your brands or sorry, your groups. Think about how they engage or support your organization in general. So do they drive their child to your dance studio? Do they take the dance classes? Do they um, buy a membership? Do they donate something to you? Do they um, shop at your store? Whatever that is. Do they buy gifts for someone else at your store? And then think about this other section, which is, um, how do they engage or support your organization on social media? So what channels do they use? What conversations uh, are they a part of? What are the ways that they engage? Are they, you know, really quick, let's just like and share that, or, or sorry, just like it. Do, are there people who um, uh, are really great at sharing for you uh, and repost your things all the time to their audiences? What are some of the other ways that, that they engage? The, the two really big pieces in this table are these ones. What are their brand values? For each group, it might be a little bit different. So um, maybe it's, it's family time and outdoor time and experiences over stuff. Maybe it's supporting local, eating local. Their values could be slightly different or at least maybe more specific than your own. So maybe, you know, eco-consciousness is a value of your brand. The way that shows up as a value for your audience might be 
more specific and we want to eat local, we want to eat clean, we want to eat fresh, we want to eat those kinds of things. So take a moment to think about what are the values, even just, just one or two for each of those different audience groups. What are some of the values that you guys are, are coming up with? Can you share in the, in the chat window? Dan, can you relay some of those? Yeah, by all means, if anyone wants to share some of their values, please put that uh, in the comments, I'll share. Uh, trust was one from Gen C. Good, yeah. Uh, we did have um, a question from a, an audience member that says, how do we target our, well, how do we know how uh, target our audiences engage? So which platforms uh, are they looking for value or quality? How do we know? How do you know which platforms they use? And what was the last part done? Are they looking for value or quality? Okay. All right. So we'll get, to, we'll get to a few more points that I think will answer that, but I've made a note in case. Um, sure. Some of the yeah. other uh, values that were shared were honesty from Julie, uh, from Ali. She says authenticity, ambition, honor, connection, and simplicity. And Nicole mm. says sense of community. Wow, so, those are really great, you guys. That's wonderful. This, this piece is actually so important because all of our content marketing or brand storytelling right now can come back to this. If you only have this table and that column in the table, you'll be really set up well to be delivering the kind of content that your audience really needs. So it's important to, to be in touch with their values. Okay, then the last column there is what are their problems right now? Our worlds have changed considerably. We all have completely different challenges than we did three months ago, whether it affects your brand or not. And in some ways it will. Think about what their problems are right now. So if one of your audience groups is, um, you know, middle-aged moms, they might have a problem with childcare right now even though you don't sell childcare, it's gonna compromise or affect how they get to you. They can't come into the store with kids. We need to kind of think about those things and then also how that, that messaging is gonna come into place in your marketing. So let's just think about for uh, at least two of your groups, what are their problems right now? For many as well, it, it, it will revolve around finances schedules, tech, um, not getting maybe time for self-care, not being able to get to the market because they have kids, not being able to cook maybe the way they want or support restaurants the way they would like to. There, there could be so many. What are some of the problems that you've identified that your audience has right now? We'd love to hear what you guys are coming up with there. Uh, Ali shared with us um, some of the, the pressures on families increased because of, because of quarantine. So financial, homeschooling, yeah. loss of social connections. Yeah, that's huge. Okay. That's great. Thinking about what their problems are right now um, can be a great place for you to be thinking about how you can solve them, how you can communicate about those um, in, your, in your content marketing. So hopefully you've got um, um, some, good, some good ideas and notes there about uh, what your audience is, is really facing right now. And um, we're gonna we're gonna come back to both of those pieces in particular, their values and their problems right now. Okay, we're gonna move to the next slide. 
So I'm gonna move through this in terms of some of the other questions. So within that um, section title of um, how do you storytell or sell in a way that's sensitive, some of the questions that we wanna ask and think about are, how do you celebrate wins when others are struggling? How do you let customers know they can support you in a way that's sensitive? And we'll go through some examples and, and tips for each of these. We're just talking about the questions right now. How do you create connections, not conflict? How do you stand out from the noise? We are all being inundated with so much right now. And at the same time, uh, we all need more uh, from the social media channels. We come back time and again to our feeds because we are looking for a connection. So how do you stand out from the noise? The first, um, the first tool that you can use in each of those questions is drawing your messaging back to your values. So the brand values, your audience values, drawing it back to the benefits and the big pictures. So these are just a couple of totally fake examples of um, messaging that, that comes back to the values. It means so much to hear from families who are thankful, our books and activity guides, have inspired special learning moments like this while children are learning at home. So I've just bolded the, the values piece there. If you have anything to do with families, probably um, education or learning um, is, a, is a value for your audience. So we're not talking about, we got to sell so many books last month. We got to help families have this experience. We're not selling things. We're helping people live and experience their values. The second example, um, we are just as committed to helping people eat fresh, locally grown greens. And that's why we're now offering daily delivery. So it's not just, uh, you know, we, we can't have a storefront right now or can't have a storefront in the way that we want to. So we're going to deliver. It's We're doing this because we're really committed to this value we know it's important to you, it's important to us, so that's how, that's how we're gonna help us experience that value. You can almost never go wrong by drawing your messaging back to your values. So here's a, here's a couple of examples. Um, Phil, Vernon's refill store, it's kind of low hanging fruit because they're all about values that it would be pretty hard to, to not love, um, but, um, you know, she's, and she's got a lot of great examples of how her, her messaging falls back on values, but um, the text in this one just says, Phil customers have saved over 25,000 pieces of plastic from entering the environment. It's huge way to go. We're killing it, woohoo. So um, there the, the image and the text are, um, are really married and we get to experience that, that joy of accomplishment of keeping plastics out of the landfill. It's not that we bought um, 25,000 items or had $25,000 25, purchases. It's um, all those interactions kept plastic out of the landfill. This is another um, example, just kind of tying it back to values and demonstrating, you know, kind of how things have changed a little bit. Tuesday, shout out to Sun Country Cycle. Owner Ricardo is a member of our business exchange program. This local business is taking all kinds of steps to help keep customers safe and out enjoying the streets and trails of our community. If you're looking for a new ride, et cetera, support local. So the values that you can come back to there are supporting local, outdoor time, family time, experiences, um, activity, fitness, nature, a whole host of values there. One of the great ways that you can, the tools that you can use to um, do some kind of that emotional lifting and speak to your values is with hashtags. 
So a lot of the time um, you can, you, if you had one or two lines of text and then just had hashtags that spoke to your value, that's an easy way for you to include that without necessarily being so direct about it. Sometimes that will work and sometimes it's nice to just let a hashtag do that work for you. So if you, um, you know, need a little bit of a refresher there or you're looking for some ideas, if you had a sense of, you know, one thing that you can do, you can go into Instagram or Twitter and just do a hashtag search to see uh, what's trending, what people are using right now. I always think I kind of have a handle on things and then I go in there and do these searches and it's like, wow, that's perfect. That's great. I had no idea that that was, that that was a hashtag and here it is. Um, so you can get lots of really great ideas there for values based hashtags. If you have anything to do with eating, if you have anything to do with local in any way, and you will, there's a lot of really great values based hashtags that you can, that you can use in your posts. There's a lot of really lovely ones for, for family time. I love this one at the bottom here, family moments. That's just so, so meaningful. There's lots of really nice imagery there. Um, hashtags to do with your community. So I just did one for Kelowna just because um, there's other Vernons. So um, explore Kelowna, Kelowna Eats, Kelowna Small Business. If you can identify some hashtags that relate to your community as well as what you sell and what you what values you help people experience that's like slam dunk for sure um, there's also a lot of new hashtags that are uh, related to each community working together to move forward and help each other support each other collaborate so it won't work for every post, but when it does, um, that can be a really great uh, way for you to, to communicate and speak to values. So some of the ones we have locally and okay together, uh, we got this, that's kind of universal, but it's, it's one that falls under that realm of kind of getting through this unique time in particular. Um, Sun Country Strong, that's an area in um, BC in the interior. YK Strong. That's one that the Kamloops area uses. So some communities will use their airport code as well as strong or together or that kind of thing. And there's lots of other examples there. So that's a great way for you to really speak to um, local values and um, have your posts get more traction because other people are searching and looking for those, those hashtags. I think we're seeing that people are are really proud and want to um, champion um, their community right now. So this is this is kind of like a really uh, electric value that you can tap into. It won't again work for every post, but when it does, if you're supporting a neighbor, a neighbor supporting you, um, or uh, the post is about kind of getting through this uh, collectively, uh, that can be really impactful for sure. So we wanna tie our messaging back to our values. Something else that we'll do well to do is, is focus on the positive. So emphasize what you can do, what your customers can do, and use language that's positive. So here's a couple of examples that I just totally ripped out of the air, so it's not a real example. Um, example, if you're experiencing coughing, fever, do not come to the store. What might be better is if we could just reposition that a little bit and say, if you are experiencing coughing or fever, please stay home until you are well and let us deliver your order to your door. Same message, but it just feels uh, much more pleasant and welcoming and that you are doing them a service. You're trying to help them. There's another example. Instead of, are you having a hard time this or this or this? Because we're having a hard time with a lot of things right now. What would be better is if you um, switched it to, would you benefit from this, this, or this? Maybe it's extra support. Maybe it's whatever that is. So think about how you can um, just always reposition your language to shift from negative experiences to opportunities for positive experiences. So that's a really, it, it kind of takes a shift in mindset because a lot of the material that we see and receive is positioned in the negative 
Um, but you can see what a difference it makes when you just shift, shift the perspective and focus on what you can do and what the positives and opportunities are. This is um, just a screenshot of some uh, copy that we wrote for uh, a clothing store downtown a while back. Um, on the left there, it might be kind of hard to read, but um, it just says support local, shop from home, and find a little something to make you smile. So, um, and then on the other side, it says there, these are, sorry, three ways that we can help you shop and keep well right now. And they listed private shopping, personal shopping, curbside pickup, and a, um, and a few other things maybe. So just focusing on what you can do and making it sound, drawing it back to values that support local and, um, and positivity instead of because we can't be open or because we had to close or because of this stupid COVID thing. It's just, this is what we can do for you now. This is how we can help you keep well. I'm not sure if this will work, um, but I have um, a copy of, a, of an ad um, from Enderby Jewelers that I thought was, was really nice for um, storytelling and selling in a way um, that was kind of meaningful, especially right now. So it was really timely. Um, and so I'm gonna play it and I hope that you can hear it. The grads of 2020 born after 9-11 and graduating in the year of a pandemic. All those years of accomplishment can still be celebrated with a special memento from Enderby Jewelers. A piece to mark their endless hours of homework, the challenges and the victories, their persistence and now their graduation. Find the meaningful gift that shows how proud you are of them. Enderby Jewelers, the secret store. Shop today at enderbyjewelers.com. So I remember when I, I was driving and I heard that on the radio and uh, while the beginning kind of, you know, focuses on some of the situation that is, that's maybe a little bit more on the negative side toward the end, they really shift to um, opportunities to um, tap into values, which is um, recognizing a lot of hard work at school, um, finding a unique and, and meaningful gift. Um, so I, I just thought that was a nice, genuine way to, um, you know, share how people can support you as well as experience their values. Okay. Hey, Natalie, that was uh, pretty topical because the last question that came in on the chat was, how do you uh, do value messaging for luxury products like jewelry uh, or art in this environment? So that spoke pretty clearly to that. Yeah, and and honestly, if if like one of our one of our clients is a jet charter broker in Florida, he lives in a totally different planet, and so do their customers. And I'm all constantly having to like change my brain to speak that language. But if that if your customers value um, elevated experiences and luxury, you can speak that way to them. That's their value. That's your brand value. That's that's your world and that's what they want from you. So if that falls in your values, um, then you're probably okay. But we'll, we'll come back to some more examples of that. So, so please give me a nudge if there's another way I can elaborate on that. Um, something else that some people are kind of wondering about thinking about is, do you want to use the C word? So um, early on, I, I don't think anyone thought much about it. We all said COVID, we all said pandemic. And then really quickly it was like, oh gosh, I, I'm gonna shudder if I hear that word or see that word one more time today. And so I think people's kind of tolerance for it has gone down a little bit and um, we're really seeing brands use alternative ways of talking about it or euphemisms even so instead of COVID-19 instead of pandemic I would really at this stage you know we're three months in pandemic makes people not feel good so and and most of the time it's just not necessary we don't actually need that that phrase so um there probably are ways that you can speak to what's happening without using that exact language. So these are a couple of the euphemisms that we've seen for this time, challenging times, unique times, unprecedented times, times of uncertainty. The, even these are kind of getting a little bit overused, but they are still um, a little bit softer uh, without being, you know, it's still, it's still very true and, and honest. So 
Yeah. Um, that's something that within our own brand and with the brands that we manage, we're trying to stick with that. But sometimes it's like, okay, you're sharing the work safe BC COVID-19 safety plan. That's what it's called. And that's what it is. So sometimes you just, you do have to use it. So for your brand, I would, I would say, think about what your won't do it are. We're at a stage where um, we kind of know what people are, um, have some tolerance for and, and what they'd rather not hear right now or what they'd rather not do. You know, a lot of people have been engaging a lot in digital ways. Maybe is that something you want to shift away from now? So think about just for your brand and your audience, what are some things that you maybe want to not do right now? Does anyone want to share what their won't do it have been to this to this stage or maybe now? Give people a chance to type in some of that. Sure. Uh, yeah. It's funny, Julie says, uh, I thought the C word was going to be cash. I think cash sounds really lovely compared to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me cash any day. <laughs> uh, he says what they won't do right now is capitalize on the pain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's still a way you can flip that though and think about the positive and the opportunity in most cases. How can we help you? Blank. Okay, we'll move on, but maybe we can come back to that downfield. Oh, oh sorry, there's a couple more. Uh, no negative people or no negativity. That's really negativity. Great. If I could speak properly, I could get this out. Um, <laughs> people can barely tolerate negative, uh, so uplifting is good. Um, That's a great, yeah, I love that idea. Focus on what's uplifting right now. Mm -hmm. That's a great rule to set for yourself. Okay, um, don't be afraid to be real. So we're all humans. Facebook is kind of this alternate or social media can be this alternate universe where most people only share the amazing things or they're commenting about, you know, in, in positive ways. This has been hard and we, see, we saw in the research that um, they want to see how you're facing it. So don't be afraid to share the moments that are a little bit harder. As long as they're coming from a place of, positivity and you can also draw it back to your values so i thought this was a lovely example from brennan teach and learn you can see the date march 21st it's from quite a while back very early on um when your heart is heavy burdened and you just had to let five staff go and the tears will not quit and one of your staff walks in with this it all helps we have kept several of our staff on so we can keep shipping and delivering and preparing your orders we love all of our staff we will get through this really hard stuff that comes from a place of positivity and optimism and getting through this and, and just love, right? I thought that was a really genuine way to share the hard stuff. Demonstrate genuine support for the greater community. So um, there's lots of ways that, that we've seen brands do this when it applies to your own brand. So this is an example of, uh, of a video post actually from Caltire. They were a part of uh, the Meals for Truckers initiative where they, um, because truck, truckers couldn't go walk into places with their semi-trailers, um, food trucks were set up at um, different locations so that truckers would be able to get meals as they're passing through towns and really they have such an important role because they're delivering um, you know essential goods and food and groceries and so many things anyway so um, you know show that you're supporting the greater community when it applies to your brand for sure uh, but also when it when it doesn't so um, this was a post that um, it was a, a really, really polished uh, video post where they are, there's images of um, doctors and nurses and lab technicians and all those kinds of things. We saw in the research that um, uh, people are hoping to see their brands show support for hospitals and, and government. So Caltire and the hospital, totally not related, but they're just sharing some messages 
of, of banks and supporting the greater community, even though it's completely unrelated. And this was another nice example of that um, Okanagan spirits um, donating um, some of their sanitizer and also just saying thank you to the hashtag uh, local, local heroes. So um, I think that's a really touching way to show your support for the greater community. I love too when I see um, people uh, just doing shout outs to their neighbors on their block, other business owners on their block. They have, they have nothing to do with each other, but they're just doing shout outs for one another. It's a really kind of cool and simple way to um, inspire some, some positivity ripples. So um, know that that's uh, a great tool at your disposal anytime. Show humans being humans. We talked earlier about how we are all really craving connections right now. Um, so the best way to do that and help people have that experience is, is use people in your pictures. People are always uh, more impactful than, than things. And it doesn't have to be, you know, glossy and, and really well put together. It's just, what are the people at your business doing? What do they physically do? It can be really simple things, um, but this is how we build connections. Those faces and relationships are really critical to, the, to your brand loyalty. So look for ways that you can do that in just really genuine, simple ways. The text here, I don't know if you can read it, says, as a company, Gumtree has always promised to support local, and it could be any more important than right now. Help a girl out. Do you know a great farmer or food producer that we could feature in our Mother's Day box? Check out these gorgeous microgreens from East Hill Farmers. So they're really kind of ticking a few boxes there. They're showing humans being humans. They're, they're drawing back to their values of supporting uh, local and uh, local food producers and helping you exercise that value too. So I think that was a really great, just simple example. How can you sell or storytell in a way that's responsive? Um, so our world is changing really quick. The rules are changing really quick. It's good if you can think about how you can kind of change your offer and overcome obstacles. So um, if one of your obstacles for your customers right now is committing to really big spends, maybe some of the messaging can be around um, in, in your solution, trials, free returns, pickup, uh, that you'll even pick up the return, financing, trade-ins, those kinds of things. Childcare, this is one that's really top of mind for me. Um, so maybe you can um, adjust your hours so that the moms who can trade off uh, with their husbands later in the day can come in or um, the curbside pickup has been really popular or um, a Facebook live date night at home. Just, just think about how you can, again, coming back to what are their problems right now that we filled out in that chart in the beginning. How can you change your messaging so that you can help them? Can you just do one small little thing to make their world easier right now? They'll be infinitely grateful and they'll remember for a long time. Something else that's important to think about is um, how, your, um, how, do your, how your audience's buyer journey has changed. They might need more or less time at different stages than they used to. I've heard from some business owners saying we're having really long conversations on the phone with our customers and that's great but it takes a bit more time so okay now that we know that um we need to do a little bit more at that stage of the buyer's journey can we have one person on facebook messenger all the time can we do a post every day that kind of speaks to some of those questions that we know they have more of now at that awareness uh phase or at the consideration phase um, maybe post purchase too. Um, we can spend a little bit more time uh, following up to find out how things went, how, how they can uh, share their experience with their brand to inspire other people in their world to have that same experience. So really kind of think about how, is their, how are their needs changed right now at these different phases and how can I create content that helps them in new and different ways at these at these stages and something to really think about again coming back to that connection piece is how can you simulate that one-to-one -one connection somehow in this new world so through your social or um or telling people that you can do that through your through your social media so this might be a piece that you haven't thought about but it it's it really can make a big difference and um i have heard from uh, a lot of people who have small stores anyway that um that this buyer journey has changed quite a bit and they've had to kind of accommodate 
their sales experience accordingly. And so that can affect your messaging too. And there's ways that you can use your messaging with FAQs or Facebook Live FAQs, those kinds of things to kind of help address um, extra needs or concerns that your audience might have. I thought this was a really nice Facebook header from the library um, showing that they um, they are going to be there at different at, in different ways for their audience and their journey, which is accessing uh, resources and choosing books and those kinds of things. So um, I thought that was a that was a nice example. So the library is using Facebook Messenger or you can chat with them on their website. So think about how you can accommodate that and then how you're going to share it on your social media. Practice social listening. So what are the conversations your audience is most engaged in? What language are they using in those conversations? How are they feeling? Really don't just be pushing stuff out. Take some time every couple days, once a week, sort of what you can fit in to take a look at the comments. What are people saying? What kinds of, um, yeah, how are they feeling? It will change for a lot of people at different stages. So it's good to have some awareness of, um, of how, your, how your audience is, is doing and how you can kind of mirror their needs in, in your storytelling. So you can um, kind of do a little bit of a review in your own channels. You can also go and follow your audience group to um, other, to competitors pages or the social media channels of other people, um, other businesses in your community to see what kinds of conversations are happening there. You could go to, um, yeah, a, a number of different, um, if you have if you have that say that 18 to 35 bracket go to the brands where those people are spending time like you know maybe a locality or a music store or the bike shop or whatever it is go to those people's feeds and see okay what are they talking about in their instagram feeds um what are the conversations that that i want to to be in and that we need to be in so that we can um uh, serve a need help our customers um, fulfill their values. How can you sell or story tell with simplicity? It's okay to stick with what works and what you know. If at the end of the day, all you have are humans and hashtags, you'll be doing really well. So don't feel pressure to take on new technology or animated posts or live Instagram stories. If that's not your thing and you didn't do that before, there's a lot of other things that you need to manage right now. So, you know, maybe you can build up to some of those things at some point, but for right now, um, I know a lot of businesses are just like, I just need to come back to the services that really work, the people that really want to be a part of what we're doing and the ways that we communicate with them that we know just work. And so um, taking a photo and slapping a couple of hashtags that speak to your values, that can go a long way and it's, and it's really simple. So just know that, that you can keep it, keep it simple and, and really um, be making an impact. So that's, that's kind of me. What questions do you guys have? I know we're getting really close to, to 12 o'clock, but I hope I've answered lots of your questions, but I'd love to um, answer more if I can. Dan? Dan, I can't hear you. <laughs> I, I had myself muted, so that was probably a lot of uh, dead air. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> it happens, right? Some people probably wish they could have a mute button on me. But um, <laughs> in light of the Black Lives Matters movement, changing online conversation quite drastically uh, in the past few days, do you have any suggestions for local brands and companies on how to best respond to this? Yeah, and that's, it's kind of a separate thing from, um, you know, what business owners are facing because of these unique times. Um, but what I tried to gauge with some of my clients yesterday morning was, what are your brand values? 
and how does this play into that? Does, does your, do your brand values come into that sphere at all? If it does, and you say, this is something, this is related to something that we stand for, then, then yeah, maybe it is something you want to share on and, and you want to, um, you know, include some of those, some of those hashtags. If it's completely unrelated to your brand values, then it, then it could be opportunistic. But if there's a way that you can drop back to your values and you'll know best if that resonates with your brand personality and uh, your audience, then, then you should be able to gauge, yeah, okay, it is in line with my values. It is an important part of who we are and what we do for our audience. Okay. I think that's, that's kind of how I tried to field that one yesterday. So there's no right or wrong answer. It's kind of what's right for your business. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, do you recommend blogging over social media posts for creating a brand tribe online? I, I think you have to use both. So if you're creating some really, you know, informative, helpful, demonstrating your thought leadership kind of blog articles, you're going to need to use social media as the vehicle to get that to your audience. When I started out, I really was a bit of a social media snob and I just wanted to um, write long paragraphs, but I realized that um, we needed social media to deliver that great content to people. So you're, you're really going to want to be thinking about how you can make, make use of both. Gotcha. Uh, Jen C asks, uh, what are some low cost ways to get information on services out to an audience that isn't using social media, such as seniors? Oh, that's a good one because I don't know what the regulations are right now for material coming into seniors homes. I do know that some brands recently have been thinking about actually putting together a nice brochure and sending it in the mail so that it arrives at the door and you can hold it and touch it and look at it because we are getting so much electronic information now that that is one way you can stand out. I think you would probably, if seniors are in your audience, um, the Morning Star is still printing and that is a, a huge source of information for that target group. They, the, the paper is really important to that demographic. So the newspaper, is would be a great resource and then probably thinking too about maybe actually just some physical pamphlets or posters or that sort of thing um if that's permitted in the facilities that you're looking at gotcha well it is 1201 so uh i think we'll wrap it up thank you so much natalie for your time i think there is such great content in there about you know, focusing on your values, relating that back to your audience, uh, understanding what they're looking for, um, you know, focusing on the positive and uh, genuine, demonstrating genuine support for the community. Um, I thank you so much for, for volunteering your time to come on and share your expertise. Extremely valuable. Thank you everybody who decided to attend today. Uh, we appreciate you in the community and uh, as members, if you have any other ideas for topics that you'd like to hear about or for us to do a, a webinar on, please feel free to reach out. As always, we're, we're here for you. So thank you again for attending and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much everybody. Please feel free to reach out. Of course. Uh, what's, what's the best way for them to reach out to you, Natalie, if they, if they choose to? Yeah, you can find us on uh, Facebook or our website, redheadstudio.com. Awesome. Okay, fantastic. That's such a great day. And thanks again. Bye, everybody. Thanks so much.